The first new launch in the most favorite location, Topayo, in X number of years is coming. Let's talk about it today. So after a super hyped up launch in Emerald of Katong, Trump Park, Nava Grove and three other launches just a few weeks ago, now the next best option that people are looking at will be none other than the Ori, which is one of the developments that I personally has been eyeballing as well, not only because it's near MRT station, but it's in Topayo. And earlier on, we were mentioning with my social media manager, we said that Topayo is the best location everybody like, but he disagreed. Lah. And I told him, just like when you stay Tampanis, you would think that Kalang is one of the best location because it's like one MRT station all the way just outside Tauma. So Topayo is like for the northern side people. Like if you stay Woodlands, then you envy your friends who are staying in Topayo. But my dear friend here say that no Le Kalang not as good as Tempenis. You say Tempenis. <laughs> <laughs> still the best. But not to worry, if you want to know more about Tampanese, there's also a Tampanese new launch coming very soon. But long story short, what I'm trying to say here is that for the northern part people, this is a great chance for you to upgrade from Woodlands, Sembawang, Bishan, Amokyo, all the way to Toapayo. Of course, this development has its pros and cons. So we're going to deep dive into the good, bad and the ugly and how this video is going to be done. First, we're going to go through the brief overview of this development with the artist impression. Next, I'll be sharing with you why you should and should should not buy the Ori using facts and figures because there's always data to show you why you can buy and why you cannot buy. So I'll be sharing with you both. So last but not least, I'll be sharing with you what you need to take note as a buyer if you're looking to buy the Ori. And before we move on, did you realize that I'm the first few to roll out the Ori video? So please do me a favor, like this video because it means a great deal to me. Thank you. Now, down to the project information. Because I checked online, there isn't so much information about this. So, it's going to be slightly longer. So, dating back to year 2023, November the 7th. First GLS site in Topayo in 8 years attract 968 million bit from CDL, Fraser's property and Sikisui house. And uh, there are a total of 3 bidders. And the average price per square foot per plot ratio is $1,360. And the last time there was any launch was actually in year 2016. It was Gem Residences by another developer this new plot over here is closer to the MRT basically you have direct access to the MRT gantry without having to cross the road I think this is a major plus because uh, that is what Trump Park had total there are 40 stories two blocks and total of 777 units. And this article says it has been eight years since the last GLS site was tendered in Topayo, a neighboring land parcel that has been developed into gem residences by Gamuda Land and Evia Real Estate. Now this is not so active in the market. When that GLS was awarded, it attracted a winning bid of $345 million, $755 per square foot per plot ratio. And look at the price difference. Quite sick, right? The total price actually increased just the land cost itself already increased by almost 80%. 1360 divided by 755 is 80% difference. And boy, it was year 2016 was the launch. And I still remember back then, I was already an agent in my current agency. I remember the development didn't really sell very well during the launch and even took quite a number of months to complete selling. On hindsight, if you look back eight years ago, right? Actually, it was quite cheap. Right? People only buy a thousand three hundred over dollars per square foot. That's for another video altogether. But sometimes it's just mind blowing. Glad that we already buy properties. Lah. Yeah, but doesn't matter. What is past is past already. Lah. So, this is the logo of Ori. Basically, it's Japanese inspired. It means folding and a home, respectively. So, this is the development. As mentioned earlier on, these are the developer JV, two blocks of 40 stories. It's considered RCR in District 12. 99 year lease, so 169,000 square feet land. 777 units. TOP year 2013. Estimated 637 lots. Architect is ADDP, builder is Wohab and these are the unit types over here. Location wise is excellent, is right across better MRT. And if I'm not wrong, you can actually walk to the MRT station without having to cross the road. It's beside the entrance of the MRT station. And it's very close to the future North-South Corridor. So if you hate travelling on CTE, right, there's hope for you because the North-South Corridor will be completed about the same time. So one major selling point about this development is none other than the views because they are not so many 40 storey high buildings around you will definitely be getting unblocked views because HDB around and the schools around are all actually pretty low rise in relation to the ORI itself so as long as you are above 12th floor if you're on the north facing you should be getting unblocked views if you're on the south facing you don't really need very high floors because over here it shows that you are facing four storey block and you'll be glad to know that the orientation is are all north south facing so means to say that the front you actually 
actually have low rise buildings, 12 storey high. The north, you actually have 12 storey facing. All the blocks are actually north south facing. Like. And here's the view of the blocks over here from level 14. If you're on the southern view and you can see the views of the CBD. And if you're on the northern view facing downwards towards a Bishan area, you can see the flyover, Topayo flyover is over here. This side, you see at the end, the horizon there, right? I always tell people that this is JB. Uh. Nobody believe on it. Let me know inside the comments if you think otherwise or what do you think. So long story short, both sides got city view. Lah. One is city view of Singapore CBD skyline. Another one is JB skyline, which is a bit oversell, lah, too far already. But yes, you are able to see JB from here. So as for the side map, it's more or less confirmed it will look like this. However, as you can see here, it's a draft. So I won't want to go into too much detail on this, but this is basically the breakdown of the different stack facing. So very quickly, what I can say is this stack will definitely be of the most premium view. The rest will be offering facility view and then the block 10 north facing will also be offering unblocked view. So I won't think there will be a significant difference in terms of the PSF pricing of different facing. However, if you ask me which will be the most expensive one, will definitely be block 12 south facing units. So so here are some perspective of the development. I personally think is quite nice. Let me know what you think inside the comments. Now, sorry that the floor plans are not confirmed at the point of recording. So if you wish to find out more about the floor plans, I have the deck. I can actually give you a private sharing. So do feel free to reach out to me. Coming to the reasons why you shouldn't buy using facts and figures is number one, definitely the pricing. How we're going to do it is using a two kilometers radius, a three bedroom as an example. Why I use a three bedroom? Because the three bedroom is a better reflection of the average per square foot because the two bedroom and one bedroom usually have a higher PSF and the four and five bedroom most of the time have slightly lower PSF. So three bedroom is right back at the middle. So using this formula, you will see that the average price for a three bedroom in this area is actually at $2.1 million. The price per square foot will be on an average of $1,662 per square foot. So if you look at the price difference, right, for the very drastic ones will be places like Bradle View, average PSF is only $1,000 per square foot. If you are looking at Topayo MRT, one MRT station away, Travista is currently selling at average PSF of $1,841 per square foot. Sky Habitat, Bishan MRT, 1866 The Trevor in Botong Pase, $1,984 per square foot. And the most recent one, Jscape, is selling at average $2,273 per square foot. So today, if you're going to buy Braddle MRT and you are surrounded by so many other developments which are reasonably new, fairly new at 30% discount, do you think it makes sense to buy the more expensive one? So judging from all these PSF, which are much lower than the ORI, right? It just tells us that this development could potentially be overpriced. Second reason is Topayo is not a super affluent neighborhood because if you look around, you are actually surrounded by very old HDB flats. Across us, you will also be getting some views of the industrial buildings as well. Last but not least, some may shoot me say that Topayo is better. I would think that if given a choice, I will go for Bishan instead because Bishan have newer HDB flats and the demographics there are a lot younger. So now I'm going to tell you why the Ori is worth buying. Let's run a search. Three kilometers surrounding the Ori, TOP year 2020 and after, based on three bedrooms only because that's the average pricing. Then we will see the average PSF to become $2,521 per square foot and the average entry price for a three bedroom at $2.51 million. Now the trollers will be coming in to say that Oh Marcus, why are you using three kilometers? The fact is very simple because three kilometers open up option towards Trump Park which is actually the OCR region. So by the time the ORI is being completed, all these developments are already 10 years old. And most of the time when people search for properties on Property Guru, if they're looking for something new or relatively new, they will not look for something more than 10 years old. So if you look at the PSF on average, right? If let's say the average PSF of the ORI is going to be at about $2,500 per square foot, then you are actually buying at today's pricing for newer projects. Next, why you should buy even though Topayo is not a super affluent neighborhood is because this development is surrounded by many schools and in fact good schools. If your kids study in Raffles or Raffles Girls School, this is just a few minutes drive away and it's within one kilometer to three primary schools and one of them is one of the very popular Beijing public school. And today in most of the areas which are close to town area, they don't really offer so many school options. Like if for people who are staying in Tolu Planga and all this, they only have a Radin Mas 
And for people who are staying in Clementi, you have a Nanhua, which most of the time is super over subscribed. For the Ori, having three primary schools is actually a huge advantage for an estate that is so close to town. Not to forget the per square foot calculation, the best comparison will likely be Jadescape, which is in the Shunfu area, completed year 2022, average PSF at $2,273. So using this data, right, is it worth buying Topayo at $2,500 per square foot? Not to forget that over here for Jadescape, if you include a 7% increment for the harmonization to normalize the pricing to the new calculation, which is the harmonization, right? We're actually talking about $2,418 per square foot. So it means to say that if you are able to get something at the ORI at $2,500 per square foot, you are almost paying about the same price than the current developments. And this development is actually a harmonized project. If you wish to find out more about why it's harmonized, basically they provide you with aircon latch, but they don't calculate it into the gross floor area. If you wish to go and check out the video, you can check out my Norwood Grant and my Lantern Mansion, which I talk about harmonization. But long story short, if you compare this with older developments, you need to minus five to seven percent from the per square foot in order to normalize and use the apple to apple comparison. Because the older developments, one thousand square feet, actually includes the aircon latch. But for harmonized project it doesn't. Now if you're still on this video, I'm gonna go into the price matrix very soon but before I do that, please subscribe to the channel because it just motivates me to do more quality content for you. Thank you. So in terms of the price matrix, I'll be using a starting price at $2,300 per square foot for the 5 bedroom with private leave. It's unlikely to happen, however, for us for wishful thinking, maybe got hope that it can happen. So because this development was purchased, estimated break even of 2300 plus per square foot, let's have a bit of wishful thinking that developer will launch at cost price and you see the 5 bedroom premium with private leave will start at about 3.3 over million dollars and the 4 bedroom will start at about 2000 maybe slightly below $3 million. Three bedroom, there should be units that will be selling slightly above two mil or maybe even under $2 million for marketing purposes. And I love the fact that there's 850 square feet, three bedroom for harmonized projects. So lastly, what you need to take note of, I think for high rise development, try your best not to overpay for the super high floor units because they tend to have a harder time exiting in future. And I'm speaking from a resale perspective, why? Because I personally bought units that above 25 floor and trust me to hit the new quantum sometimes takes a bit of time however it was still profitable but if you can try to go something more on the mid floor to have easier exit and a reasonable amount of profit for more advice or if there's any comparison you want me to make in terms of the current new launch properties that you're looking at this is my number feel free to reach out to me like comment subscribe turn on notification bell because we post weekly real estate videos like this with that thanks for watching and i'll see you at my next one bye